Hello everybody, my name is Ed Beard, I'm an airbrush artist. Uh, my website is airbrushbybeard.com and I'm here with my good friend Jim Keeley, owner of the Shanna Marie. Uh, well, just a little history on how Jim and I got together. About 10 years ago, we were at Autorama together in Harrisburg area and Jim had a basically flat black painted 78 Chevy Shorty, which I had always wanted to mural and never got a chance to back in the late 70s, early 80s. And so I got to know Jim a little bit, knew that he was a really good guy, had a great family and I I said to myself, you know what, I'm going to offer to do this job for him and maybe we'll figure some kind of compensation out, but it won't be a regular job, it was something special between the two of us. So the whole concept of the start was his interior was a little bit of a pirate theme and I thought maybe we can incorporate something that would, you know, contact with his, his love of pirates, but also do something special for himself. And he said, well, I'd love to have my kids on if I can, you know, his, his son and his daughter and maybe even potential grandchildren down the line. And so began the process. So I went out down to uh, Burdenhand, Pennsylvania, where he's from, and visited with him. We sat down, we talked about the concepts and the ideas, got some photographs of his kids, and this, thus began the process. But see, Jim does, did something to me that he found my weakness. What did you say to me, Jim? Uh, do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. So basically, normally the customer will give you a lot of input and direction and, and say, this is my limitations. Jim had no limitations, and as a result of that, I went crazy on it and I actually created a storyline to which is very complex at times and so Jim always well basically says let's let Ed it's all yeah. in his head let Ed tell the story so anyways Jim Keeley owner of the 1978 Chevy Shanna Marie to which I'm gonna now take you on the storyline of the Shanna Marie so thank you Jim mm -hmm. so the birth of the Shanna Marie all starts with these two pirates brother and sister Shanna Marie and J Captain JP this is a portrait of Jim's daughter and her eyes and so forth and it is the captain she is a cat pirate captain of this ship right here the Shanna Marie well as with typical pirates the British were always in pursuit of them and in this particular situation the British got the better hand on the Shanna Marie well as they sank the ship Captain JP found out about the fact that the the fleet had taken out her his sister and basically pledged to revenge his sister and so in doing so, I had to come up with a concept of how am I going to convert this ship into a ghost ship? And how am I going to take this story on? Not making it too much like what you'd see with the Davy Jones concept, but still have the whole theme of that undead pirate thing. So that's what we did, and we started that story after this scene here with the first incarnation of how it was that JP, her brother, became the undead captain and basically the ruler of the seas. So that's what we'll do next. So, as we go on with the story, we see Captain JP here in his chambers, his quarters, signing the pact with those, the powers that be to be able to transform him into the undead so that he can travel the seven seas endlessly and be able to pursue all those that took out his sister in revenge. So, he signs the blood pact uh, on his desk. Um, what I did with this mural, is because in this altered world, altered state where he's an undead, he can speak to many different things, including the shrunken heads of those on his ship that perhaps were insubordinate and whatnot. So this is his head advisor, literally head advisor. Um, the costuming and the design work that I did in this is 100% unique, it's 100% original, but it is based on that 1840s, 1850s look. I wanted to go with Something that had the feel of what we saw in the Davy Jones Pirates of the Caribbean, but not like that, an entirely different story. And so what happens in this particular pact is when the moonlight hits at him and his crew members, they actually transform into the undead. If the moon is not out, they are human. So different from what you would have seen in the movie Disney where it would be revealing that what their true nature was here we actually have a transformation in my particular storyline so Captain JP he is now in pursuit um, in his chamber you'll see a ton of hidden objects and I want to bring you closer in to show you some of these things because all the little things that are hidden are all parts of his history in the future so we have little eyes that are hidden within the uh, crevices of the wood uh, over here you have a reaper just a subtle image of it. And this is what makes it fun. It's kind of like I spy for big kids. Um, as we get down here, we see another reaper head. And again, the whole concept is he's always surrounded by the underworld. So here we have the bride um, and she's embedded into the woodwork as well. 
Here you have over here, you can see that the inkwell is actually blood, part of the pact. Over here on the telescope, you have the Captain J.P. Keeley, which again, this is an actual portrait of his son, J.P. So the whole thing with this van for Jim Keeley was that it was a family tribute. This, this van's been in the family, the kids have grown up with it. And yet we wanted to make it into something that was an interesting fantasy style story of the pirate style. Now the other thing that I had to do, with, which was a bit of a challenge, aside from the moonlight concept coming through this window, is that this is an actual window and it's a contemporary metal frame. I don't know if you can see it, if you go in close, you can actually see this is a metal frame. And I had to transform that into an old cabin of a typical pirate ship, wood, so that it, it kind of blended into the mural, but it's still functional and can actually be seen. So all of this highlighting of this blue-white is what we imagine the moon. And of course, he has a blue light that shines at night through here, and it really gives it an awesome effect. So again, the light coming in, you can see where the hand becomes skeleton. And then as soon as where it's outside of that transformation, you'll see the normal flesh. So this is in the moment in which the moonlight is coming in and starting to transform Captain JP into the undead, where he wields the power of the sea and he can just do anything. Further going down over here, of course, we have some of, <laughs> some of those that didn't agree with him. And of course, this is what happens with him. He uses them as uh, kind of paperweights on the table, if you will. And, and everything is filled with aquatic things, whether it's octopus or starfish or whatever it is. Of course, we have the octopus over here. In, again, more of the knotwood, uh, knots of the wood, you'll see hidden things. There's an octopus eye over there. You've got coral brain, different types of clams. And then as we go further up into this area, this is his first mate. And his first mate, of course, is this is where you get that flavor of the Pirates of the Caribbean and, and that whole myth behind it, which is, you know, these, the, the ship becomes alive and very much like the Davy Jones concept. And so this was my concept, a tribute to that. Um, again, all of the different uh, mollusks and, and starfish and coral and whatnot. Now, this being the, the 1978 Chevy van, which is just a load of fun. We come to these vanning events and it's a, it's a lot of great fun. Jim's wife was a little bit on edge about it. She wasn't too sure if this was something they really wanted to do. So I had a little opportunity to, to empower Melody, uh, his wife. And by doing so, I designed for her specifically a unique special mermaid flintlock. And you can see the mermaid here and all this engraving work. And then her initials, MBK. And I told her, I said, this is yours. So if Jim ever gets out of line, he's done. You've got it at all times. She loved that. She liked the fact that her, her name was attributed to it. So needless to say, uh, she fell in love with it too. She also looked at the fact her kids are on here, the portraits of her son and daughter, um, and for that matter, their grandchildren. And that was the thing that comes up next. If you look down here at the rum case, because what, what pirate can go along without rum? This has the initials of his first two grandchildren, and this future grandchild has been put in two zero with two dashes because we don't know. And actually, since this van was painted, another grandchild was born. So he was thinking ahead to make sure he would have some kind of a tribute to his future grandchildren. And that's the beauty of these vans, you know, and, and, and it's been my privilege to be able to mural these. And it's probably the, the greatest um, opportunity for me as an artist to create things is that they become specifically personalized family heirlooms, legacy pieces for all these families. And um, there's so much more than what folks look at it as a quick glance. They just see a cool thing and maybe they'll catch the hidden objects. But when you actually sit down and talk to these vanners about what goes into their pieces, they're incredibly personal. And the, it, so much of it, is come, it comes down to family. And then they become family heirlooms that are kept in the family generation after generation. So anyway, so there are some more hidden objects in here and I'm trying to see if, oh, there's one, another skeleton face in there, another reaper face in there. And I think I actually hid more than I can remember, but I think there was another one in here, but it depends on the light. So this, of course, ends the scene where you have JP, Captain JP, transformed into the undead, and he's in, going to be in pursuit of the British fleet. So here we are at the moment where the Shanna Marie has been found by Captain JP and resurrected. He then basically takes the spell that is upon him and he casts that spell onto the ship and the ship becomes a ghostly undead ship and capable of doing amazing feats of course and naturally not dependent on the winds anymore of the ocean. 
So here in this ship, we wanted to incorporate some of Shanna Marie, which is J, uh, Jim Keeley's daughter's favorite things. And one of the things we did here is this flower. And this is an insignia, one of, I believe what Jim told me was her favorite, her favorite flower. So I incorporated that into the logo on, on, the, on the sails as well as the flags. And you know, you see it somewhat tattered, but at the same time, you, you can see that the ship has been empowered all over again. And the whole entire ship has all this glow work going on. And then, of course, you have the Shanna Marie herself, and that was one of the insignias. You know, she might have been a, a, a beautiful woman to look at, but she was not someone to mess with, needless to say. She was in control of her ship. So all of these accoutrements stayed with this ghostly ship. And then in what I wanted to do is kind of manifest this undead look of what JP would be in a complete undead format. So you, you see on the other side where he's just starting to transform, and here he is in complete transformation and it's just kind of like a, an image within the clouds. And of course, those clouds go into a nighttime sky. Uh, the nighttime sky, as it follows through, you see in the moon, you're kind of like the head reaper, basically the guy he did the deal with to be able to become immortal and undead on the seas. That moon, as it glows, highlights across the, the clouds and also comes into the ocean where there are literally thousands of waves that I airbrushed and fine lined. So as we get further down into the highlights and closer, because in the foreground your waves get closer, I literally went in, not just with the airbrush, but I went in with a fine line brush to highlight every single wave. This took probably 60 to 100 hours just doing this. And the fun thing about when I was doing this was every time Jim and his friends would be done with work, they would come on over in the garage and basically line up their lawn chairs and sit, and they basically called it Ed TV and they would watch Ed TV for several hours a night as I worked on the piece. So this is the scene where you have the transformation, the ship has been ro uh, rose from the bottom of the seafloor and is now in pursuit. So here we have the final installment, which is the hood. This was done in 2018. Um, and it basically just encompasses the, the name, the Shanna Marie. And I had to create a stylized lettering, 100% unique, that would really reflect that concept of the aquatic, the marine, and the undead thing. So I went with a Kraken feel. If you look at the lettering style, you'll see they're basically octopi. You know, they're, they're tentacles with different mollusks on them. And of course, they're glowing with the, the ghostly glow. And that is breathing from, this is where it gets into the automotive side, the air induction, this hood scoop, you have this ghostly mist that's coming out and it's almost like it's sucking in the ghost. So almost like a concept of Christine, this van becomes alive and it's really cool at night because it has these beautiful blue lights and all LEDs and it glows that bluish green. So it has that ghostly feel. Um, and then finally, where after he has had successful revenge uh, for his sister, he then continues to sail the seven seas in his form, this is of course the Shanna Marie. He, by the way, how that happened is he resurrected the ship. Uh, so he found the location of the ship and once he had done that pact, um, he was able to resurrect the ship and then the ship became ghostly and uh, some, uh, as we talked about that earlier. And so here we of course have the final JP. And also one little more detail and I'll show you, um, in fact, if you go back into the earlier video, you'll see up on his hat, this particular flower. That happened to be a favorite flower of Shanna, his daughter. So we incorporated that in it as well. So there you have the final thing, the Shanna Marie.